Hi everyone, my name is Agnes Fries, and I am the creator of an online tool called the Grid Designer. The Grid Designer is used to create color charts for multiple crafts. That includes cross stitch, latch hook, crochet, knitting, corner to corner crochet, and pretty much any, any kind of craft where you would need to create a grid based color chart. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take this image, digitize it into the grid designer, and create a simplified picture that we can use for a graph gun. So we're going to be creating this picture out of this particular image. Okay, and I'm going to start here at freesworks.com, F-R-E-E-S-E-W-O-R-K-S.com. I'll click on the Grid Designer tool here. Grid Designer will come up. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Project, Create from Image, and then Select Image. So we're going to pick up our sailboat. It's somewhere. Now this is a, a free download from pixabay.com. And let me just see if I can find it. Here it is. Okay, a little boat. Um, and I have a I have a link. I'll put a link to this in the description for this video, so you can get to that particular um, picture image if you'd like to. Okay, so here is our sailboat. Okay, now in this particular case, I'm not going to really do anything to this picture over here um, if you have like a photograph or something like that and that's too dark or too bright or something like that you can modify some of the characteristics of that photograph and do some interesting things over here these buttons down below here modify the image and if you want to save that image after you've modified it you can click on save image so there's lots of things you can do there. There's another uh, video that shows more about, um, about those settings over there. Um, okay, so you can watch that. That would be the main one. It's a one for um, latch hooking, but it can be used for anything. So um, over here, we're going to select our palette. And I'm just going to pick uh, Red Heart Super Saver worsted weight yarn, something that I'm really familiar with. Um, and I'm going to pick that. So now we've got our colors up here. So this is our digitized image and how it's going to look when we when we create our pattern. So um, before I'm going to, uh, uh, in a little bit, I'm going to reduce the number of colors here and do some color substitutions and things like that. But I want to go and set the grid size first. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to be doing this for crocheting, for making a graph again. So I'm going to click Define, and then um, Crochet, and I'm going to pick my simple cro crochet gauge. And um, so now we've got that defined. And then we can figure out, once that's defined, then we can figure out um, how many inches the whole thing would be given the gauge that we just put in there. Let's suppose that I want to make this maybe 40 inches wide. 40 inches wide and would we'll come up by 40 by 56 then. It would be 120 stitches across and 184 rows tall. So I'm going to use that. And then also another thing that you can do when you're um, doing a crochet grafkin, when you want to digitize something for uh, making a grafkin, you want to reduce the number of these little dots and things like that that are in the, uh, in the pattern. And one way that you can do that in Grid Designer is to select this uh, smooth digitization type and see how that eliminated these little dots and things that were down here in in um, in the water area and also eliminate a lot of these little blue lines and things like that up there so most of what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be trying to reduce the number of color changes that you would have to do in your grafkin so um, that's that's the um, that's going to be kind of what we're going to be working towards so um, so just to show you again if you put the sharp on you get a lot of little 
dots and things like that, you put the smooth on and you get a lot of that goes away. So that's a good thing to use if you're doing this for a graph gun. Okay, let's go back to the palette now. So we've got some light blue up here. And if you put the mouse over the area, you know, over a color up here, you can get, you can see what the color actually is coming out to be. So, um, so we've got a so large area of light blue. This one down here is going to be delft blue. There's some white. Real teal is this area in the boat here. There's some hot red here. Uh, Turqua is this color over here. And we're going to be reducing some of these colors by doing some substitutions in here. Now, it's also possible to um, do substitutions. You could just go out, you could say create project and go out into the editor and you can do some color substitutions out there too. But you can eliminate some of that work by just uh, color substituting in here. So, um, and the other thing we can do is there's a lot of colors being used in here. We can also just reduce the number of colors to something. I don't know exactly how many we've got. We've got the turquoise, this, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe six or seven colors or something. Let's try seven and see what we get. Okay, so now we've got it reduced down to light blue, delft blue, white, real teal, hot red, country blue, and the turqua here. So that actually came out pretty nicely. Um, country blue is, I think, being used right here around the edge of these portholes. And if we're going to do this for crocheting and we want to just maybe eliminate that extra color that's there, we can do a substitution in here. And um, I'm going to substitute that for maybe the dark, this um, real teal, and, and just eliminate that color change there. So I'm going to go in here and find, you can put the labels on, and you can search for the name names here. There's real teal. Okay. Um, so I'm going to just do that and see that cleared that up right there. So that's all, that's all gone. Okay. So I think we've got that. Now that color substitution could have been done out in the editor also, um, cause there's a color substitution tool out there but you can also do it in here. Now you can also end up with additional colors or you might have an area like this light blue up here where sometimes you will get some other blues mixed in because the, the picture itself might be shaded in such a way that some areas are a little darker or a little lighter or something like that. And so you can clear up problems like that. And, and uh, so if there was another color mixed in here with the light blue, we could eliminate that by doing a color substitution like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and come out and create our project. Okay, so now we have our project. Now we're going to do some additional cleanup. Um, in particular, I'm going to use the selection tool to select areas that I want to do a color substitution in. There is a, there's a general color substitution tool here, up here at the top. And if you click that, you can, um, you can, you can substitute colors in the entire picture. So for, and if you click on a color in the picture, it will take you to that color in the list. So down here is a list basically of all the colors that are in the picture. And if you click, so if I click on the red, then it will scroll to the red here. If I click on the turqua, it'll scroll to the turqua. If I click on light blue, it'll scroll to the light blue, etc. So you can jump to particular things and do that. Now, one thing that I want is I think that instead of this real teal, I would rather have a navy blue. Let's put our, our, uh, our, um, labels on and we'll just pick soft navy okay so there's soft navy and i think that color i like that color better for the center of the boat and it color substituted all these other places where 
the real teal was used where I, I'm actually going to eliminate that and I'll show you how I do that. So this is this is doing a color substitution throughout the entire picture. But if I go and I pick this uh, selection tool down here, I can select areas of the picture, like say these clouds up here at the top. And I don't, let's say I don't want this outline in here because I don't want to have to crochet that. I'm just going to make the clouds white. And I don't want, I don't want this dark blue outline around all of them. So I'm going to just go in here. And now when I do my color substitution, I click on substitute colors up here. Now I get a little box that shows me that I'm only working in this area. So I'm only working you know, inside the box. So I'm not substituting in the entire picture. I'm only substituting in the area that I selected. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change my soft navy to the light blue. Here's light blue. Okay, and that will clean up that part of the picture. And then I say convert pattern. Now I could have gone down here and picked a drawing tool or something like that and gone in here and changed all these all those blues to the other one. But it's faster if you're coming out of a digitization like we have here and you're getting a lot of little bits of pieces of things that you want to clean up. It's It can be considerably faster to go ahead and just uh, do a selection use the color substitution and clean up everything in that area, you know, right away. So now with this, this uh, selection box, we can move around like this. We can, you, when you, um, when you put your mouse over it, when it's out here, it grabs the picture and moves it around. But when it's in here, it will actually grab the selection area and move it around. And if you want to change the size of it, if you get your mouse over the edge where the, you see the cursor change into that double headed arrow. That means you can pull that side down. So we're going to come down like this and I'm going to substitute in this area. So I'm going to say substitute Navy for, let's go in here and just pick used. That'll actually reduce our list of colors. I won't even need the um, labels then. And I'll just pick light blue and see that cleared that right up nicely. We'll take this and put it on the other side over here. And we'll reduce it down a bit. Put it over what we can put it over there. And just go ahead and do the same thing. Okay, and if I make it a little more narrow, I can slide it in here. Can't quite get that one up there, but can't get both of those, but I can get this section. Do the same thing. And I think it's, I think it's much faster to do it that way. Even if I've got like a single thing like this, I'll often just use the selection area to clear that out. And then let's go and get this section down here. And then we'll come over here and we get a, there's a bunch over here we can get. And a couple more up here. Okay, and that cleaned the sky up really nicely. Um, let's go down here. We'll make our box kind of narrow and we'll put it right over this. And just clean that up there. Okay. And then there's a few right in here. I want this one. Okay, and there we go. Um, okay, so now we're going to clean up a little bit more. Um, I think that this this teal or this turquoise sail over here, I'm going to make just a solid color 
of uh, turquoise. So I'm going to put my selection box right over here. Pull this down here. That over there. Go into my substitute colors again. Get rid of that dark blue there and just make that um, a, a solid turqua color there. And then over here, I want this, I'm going to start by just making this red and, red and white. So let's get rid of that dark blue in there. And we'll just make that red like that for now. Okay, then uh, also this flag up here has some blue in it. So we'll go ahead and do that. And this time I want to substitute the red for it. Okay. All right, so that's cleaned up quite a bit. Now, um, we're going to have to go in and do some actual editing at this point. I don't see a lot of other things that we can just use a substitution tool for. So I'm going to use this zoom to zoom in to our picture so we can do some, do some more intensive editing in here. And we're going to clean up this masked area. Up here, we need to fill that in. We need um, now when you're picking colors, there's multiple ways to pick colors. So this is the foreground color over here, and there are there are some other drawing videos and things that will teach you about the drawing tools in general and what the foreground and background color mean. Um, but when I pull this down to select my color, the ones that are actually used in the picture are marked by these little icons in the corners. You can see that this is the red, that's the blue, this is the, this is the soft navy. But, and, but another way to look at this is to click on the show used box. And this is really good when you've created a picture out of the digitizer. Um, so you click on the show used box and it will show you only the colors that are currently used in your picture. And in general, those are the only colors you're going to be working with when you're um, you know, uh, finishing up, cleaning up your picture. So it's really good to use that show used box. And that exists over here on the background color too. Okay, so um, let's go and pick this dark blue and we'll just fill that in there. And for now I'm going to just fill those in like that. Okay, um, and now I also, I don't think I want all these little light blue things in here. So I'm going to pick the turqua and we're just going to go over and erase those things with turqua. And one thing that is useful, so I've, I've got this, notice that this is, this is uh, painting one cell at a time. So if I click here, I'm getting one cell at a time. But one thing that can also be useful when you're cleaning up a picture like this is you can change the, the size of the area that's being painted by the, the drawing tool. So now when I click here once, it's it's filling in a three by three rectangle. So I can change the size of that and, and it'll become much quicker to go ahead and, and uh, overwrite you know whatever you want to do there. And I think that I'm going to make this sail come down a little bit so that it has a nice curve to it, maybe. It's probably a little too much of a curve. Um, one thing that you can do when you're zoomed in like this, and let's say now that we've made a change, we want to go and look at the whole picture and see if that looks good or not. You can come up here and you can click on this, Zoom to Show All, and that will make the picture smaller so that it fits into the screen. You can take a look at the whole picture and say, do I like what I did or not? And when this button is changed with a little return arrow on it, if you click it again then, you will zoom back to exactly where you were before. And I, this is really useful, like if you're using, if you're looking at something that's fairly large and you need to edit something detailed in a particular area, you know, you have it zoomed into that area and you're editing here, then you can quickly go over here, look at the whole picture, 
and then while it's got the little return arrow on it you can go back to where exactly where you were and so I use that to go back and forth to see how my edits look uh, in the full picture okay let's come over here now and I want to I'm going to make this a solid red because I don't want to deal with the white color changes over here so let's go in here and I'm going to pick the line tool and I'm going to pick red and I'm going to change my size back to one because if I that size there will affect the line width also um, so I'm, I'm going to make that just one so I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some lines here to kind of separate the sail from the sky so that I can, oops, I don't probably want to do that one. Let's just do, I just want to separate it from the clouds here is mostly what I want to do because I'm going to do a uh, substitution or a fill rather of all the white areas in here with red. So I'm going to use this fill tool and I needed to separate it from the cloud because if I click on this here, and it had been connected, it would have filled in the cloud with red too. So I wanted to separate that out. So I use the line tool to do that separation. All right, now, one thing that you can do if you're on a desktop machine is um, you can use both the left and the right mouse buttons. So the left mouse button will draw with the foreground color and the right mouse button will draw with the background color. And this is useful when you're working, uh, you know, against a background or something like we've got this red with the blue here. And what I want to do is I want to put some blue in here and kind of edit this edge here. So I'm going to get the drawing tool and I want to kind of round this edge a little bit and just kind of clip that off a little bit. And then I'm going to make this come back up here a little bit too. So I want it to look more like that. I want the sail to look kind of rounded. And what I was doing there when I was drawing this blue is I'm right-clicking with the mouse to draw the background color. And if I made a mistake in there, I can quickly left-click with the, that, those, with the, to get the foreground color. So left mouse draws the foreground color, right mouse draws the uh, background color. So that's a right mouse, that's a left mouse. So you can go back and forth and and uh, draw with two colors basically at the same time. Okay, and then down here, I'm gonna right click, right click, right click to draw the light blue in the background color on this thing here. Right click, right click there. Okay, and then I wanna look at my picture. So I'm gonna do this take a look and see how it looks. I think that it leads like a little dark blue over here, I think. So we can go and change this to dark blue. Now there's another option there. There are these two palettes up here for foreground and background color, but you can also put up a floating palette. So here's a floating palette that we can use. This The, the top section of this does the foreground color and the lower section does the background color. And these little icons here show you what's currently selected. Right now it's the soft navy, and the background color is the light blue. Um, let's go and pick my thing here. I think I'm going to just take that edge off of that one. Okay, then I want to go back in to where I had zoomed. So I'm going to go back to here. And now I want to clean up this area down here. I'm not sure whether I want that white line there or not. I think maybe that would be sort of a pain. So I think I'm just going to fill that in with this color down here. Now, if at any time you'd like to see, like if I put the mouse over a particular place and say you have a lot of colors and you want to know what color that is, there is under the display menu, there's a show cell color. And it has a little mouse picture by it because that means wherever the mouse is, it now shows you what it's what color it's over. So let's let's do a little more cleanup. Oh, I wanted to do that up there too. I wanted to add a little bit of maybe that on the side of that might be better. And then let's fix this 
fill this cloud in over here. And we might smooth out some of our clouds because it will just simplify the whole crocheting thing if we do that. So we'll maybe fill in a few places. Maybe that could just change to white right there. Something like that. And um, let's see. I'm going to also get rid of switching back and forth to different things, but I'm going to get rid of this. Now, with the fill tool, I can also right click. Oh, technically I had that set, but let's set that to something else. But um, so now the foreground is set to the Delft blue and the background is set to the light blue. If I have the fill tool on, which was set up down here, I can right click and just fill areas. So right mouse button would fill with that. Left mouse button, if I come over here, will fill with the Delft blue. So left mouse button does foreground, right mouse button does background. Okay, so we've got, I can kind of fill that in around there. And I'm just clicking, this is, just left mouse button with the fill tool. I'm just going to go along there and fill all that in. Okay, now this probably this wave ought to come down a little bit. Sometimes I pick up the line tool and I'm going to right click with this because I want light blue. With that dip to come down there a little bit. And then I'm going to left click to do that one. Okay, and then we can go out and see what we think it looks like come back to where we are. Okay. All right. Now let's take a look at these portholes. These two look like they digitized exactly the same. They're four across here and they look like they're the same height. But this one over here is a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and paste one of these on top of that one so that they all look exactly the same. So I'm going to get my selection tool I'm going to go over here, pick this porthole. I'm going to say copy, and then I'm going to say paste. Okay, that gives me a copy of my porthole. And then I'm going to put it over here, try and line it up where I want it to be, and then just click the blue button to apply it to the grid. Okay, now let's take a look at our whole picture again. Okay, that's looking pretty good, I think. Um, I think that I would like to repeat this blue up here. So let's do that. We've got uh, Delft blue as the foreground color. So I just want to pick my fill tool, left click to do foreground, and that'll fill that one in. And let's just save it sailboat project. Okay. Okay. Now, another thing we could do, say we were make, you were using this to make, um, say, a children's uh, throw or, you know, cover of some kind, um, and you wanted to put their name on it. So one additional thing you can do is to click on the text tool down here. Now, if you're doing this for the first time, there'll be a little pop-up that will come up and it'll tell you to drag a rectangular area where you want the text to be. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to drag this area here. Okay. And that's going to start my text tool here. Now, I don't have to get that rectangular area exactly right. It's just kind of, it's just kind of a starter place for where your text is going to be. 
um, you just have to you know get a starting place then you can you can adjust this we can change the font we can we can change the height of this and we can move it around wherever we want to put it and we can also change the color of the letters up here I'm going to use um, let's say Roboto well let's see let's put let's put blue on that makes it kind of a little rounder fatter letters which look kind of nice on uh, children's things and um, let's put a different we could put a name in here let's say Amy up there at the top and we could make it bigger or smaller um, let's try a little bit bigger okay so something like that maybe up at the top Okay, and then when you're done with it and you, you like it where it's placed, you click on this tool here, which says apply text to the grid. And that will take whatever text you had that was floating around that you could move and it'll apply it directly into your drawing. Okay, so um, let's finish just up a couple of other things. I, I, I want to color these, these portholes something other than the sky color. So I'm going to pick white over here, pick the selection tool, and go in and put those in as white. Um, and I think that it would look nice maybe to have parts of the sail um, come in front of the mast. So I'm going to go back to my drawing tool, and let's go back to a close-up uh, let's see and let's go let's pick red and I don't remember how I did this in the in the project I was doing but I brought one side in front of the sail in front of the mast and the and then the bottom of the other side in front of the mast I think is but I'm not sure which side I did but I'm just going to edit that just a little bit just because I think that will look a little bit better. Oh, that's the wrong color. Let's do that over. Maybe something like that. Okay, and let's go out and look at that real quick. Okay, I think that's okay. Maybe I don't need this um, little point on here. Something more like that. Yeah, I think that looks better. Okay, so um, I think that's about it. Um, oh, I did fill in. I did fill in some of these other white areas. So anything to reduce the number of color changes without really, um, you know, distracting from the picture. So I'm going to just go in here and fill those in with some light blue using the fill tool. We don't need that there. Whoopsie. I guess that's not white in there, so that should be okay. Okay, so um, that's basically it. I guess we could get rid of that white there. Now that we have the name there, maybe it'll look a little better if we just clear that white out. Okay, so I think we're done. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, this pattern without the name on it um, I will have the link for that so you could pick up the pattern and add the name following the instructions in here. Um, so I'll have that there and eventually we'll put this in a blog post also. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.